Hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Slightly later than I'd planned. Uh, thanks to a puppy that refuses to cooperate this afternoon. Um, but I'm here with you now, so uh, hello and very warm welcome to you. Um, today's training is going to be all about what to talk about on Facebook Live. Um, the reason that um, I'm going to be doing some training on that is because it's a question that keeps being raised. A lot of people say, uh, never mind the nerves about doing it, but one of the biggest problems and, and worries that people have is that they don't know what to talk about. They don't know if they were to go live on Facebook or Periscope, but we'll stick with Facebook Live as that's what I'm on today. Um, they don't know what they would say. They don't know what they would share. They're unclear as to what people would want to hear from them, why people would want to hear that from them anyway, what could they offer, what would be of interest, and why would anybody want to listen to them in the first place. So I want to help you debunk all of that, because none of that is true. Um, and if you are a female entrepreneur and you are looking to draw people in, let people know what you do, share your expertise, give to people, uh, educate them, help them, whatever it may be, then Facebook Live is an incredible way to do that. And you do have far more knowledge than you could ever realise and, and that you've ever really realised. So I want to help you today to overcome that worry about what do I share? I've got nothing. I, I know people are not going to be interested. So I would start off by saying that one of the first mistakes that we make when we think about going live on social media is that we think it's all about us. Um, and that's a kind of a natural reaction, I suppose, a natural response to the idea of being live. We panic that everybody is going to be looking at us, that everybody's interested in what we've got to say, and it's all going to be about us and how much we know, how much we are showing, how much of an expert we think we are, whether people really believe we're an expert. Um, it all centres around us um, and our own skill set, our own belief in what we offer and our belief in what we know. And actually, that's the, completely the wrong way around. And this is probably the most central thing that I can say to you, the most key and mute point um, of this training, and that is that it isn't about you, it's about the people that you are broadcasting to, the people that you are serving. They have a need, they need something from you, and you're able to help them, you're able to offer them something. So it isn't about you, it isn't about judging your level of expertise and how many qualifications you've got or how many years you've been doing what you're doing. This is about whether or not you can answer that need. So I think to start with, we often just kind of get this the wrong way around, kind of back to front. We panic about ourselves and we forget the very people that we're supposed to be helping. So to give you an idea of that, in my business, I am a public speaking coach. So I am helping women to find their voices, work out what it is they want to say, and then giving them the techniques to be able to do that with confidence and with ease. So my, the person that I'm helping through a live like this, he's somebody who needs all that help. So that's got to be the priority, not how much expertise have I got, how many years have I, have I got behind me that allows me to claim I'm some kind of expert. It's whether I can help women who need that kind of help, who need that sort of level of advice and guidance and whether going live like this I can be sharing that and that's what you need to think about too. What is it? Hi Catherine, lovely to have you with us. Um, what is it that you can help with? That should be your starting point when you're thinking about going live. So whatever your area of expertise, whatever your business is, whatever you are about, somebody out there needs to hear it. Somebody out there needs your help. The second mistake I think we make with Facebook Live when we panic that we've got nothing to say is that we forget how much we know and actually how much of that other people need to know and, and need to learn. We forget our level of expertise in our field. Now even if you've only been doing something a few months, if you are broadcasting to people who've yet to take a step into that industry and that skill set, you're already ahead. You've already got knowledge and information that you could be sharing through your Facebook Lives. There is, um, there is a quite a well-known saying that you really only need to be two steps ahead of somebody else to be the expert. So if you thought about everything that you know within your business, within your speciality, 
you would discover you are way ahead, even if you've only been doing it for a very short space of time, because those people who are yet to take steps into that world won't know this, these things. You have expertise already that you can share. Now, obviously, the longer you've been doing your particular skill, you've got your particular skill set, you've been doing your particular job, um, or, or you've been in your business, then obviously that skill set is increased, so you've got even more to offer. But you need to get over the idea that you've really got nothing to offer and nothing to talk about, because you have. So um, I've got a little task for you, which I think really, really helps when you're, you're going through that mindset of, I've got nothing. What on earth can I share? Who on earth is going to be interested in any of this? So write down, start with your business. Start with what it is you're doing. What's the reason you want to be going live? Because you have a business and you want to help. So start by writing down everything you know within your business, and I mean everything. Right from when you started out, and perhaps you started up a blog, or you started your website, how you got your social media up and running. Just write down everything that you have learned and you know through your business. And it doesn't just have to be about your special subject that you teach in. So in my example, for, my, for me, in my example, it would be, I wouldn't just have to write down everything I know about speaking and going live and presenting. What about all the other things I know within my business? About confidence, about pricing, about approaching clients, about finding people, communicating, use, using social media. I mean, these are things I do every day and you probably do within your businesses too. So make a list of everything in your business right from day one, perhaps even before when you were planning it and mapping out what you intended to do. Write it down because these are things that people need to hear and learn from you. These are things you could teach in Facebook Lives. You could share your experience of setting up a website, getting social media started, how you're building your social media following. You could be sharing this. Um, but the other thing to think about too with all of this are your passions. I think one of the things we think with Facebook Live is that we have to be we have to kind of present a very businessy face. And I would say to a degree that's true. You're naturally representing your business when you're going live. So I'm coming to you today as a public speaker and somebody who teaches women how to speak and use video. So I want to present myself in a certain way. But people also want to know about you. We buy from people. We don't, and another great quote I saw the other day was that we don't buy what people do, we buy why. We, we, we're interested in what motivates somebody to be offering what they're offering. So there's no reason that you can't share some of you, a little of who you are, what motivates you, what you're interested in, what your passions are, um, and, and why. Because people are naturally really interested in that. So alongside your list of everything you know within your business, everything you know since you've set up your blog, your website, your your business, everything that you have learned, write it down. Then look at what your passions are. What are the things that you're interested in? What, what is it in your life that you're up to, that you're learning, that you can share? Those of you that follow my blog and have followed some of my posts will know that I'm learning to sing, I'm learning to sing opera, and I've shared a little bit of that. I'm not coming on and giving you an aria, but um, I'm sharing a little bit of that. I'm telling you a little bit about my life and the ways I'm trying to improve using my voice and the skills that I'm using in singing that I realise I actually use in speaking and just didn't know it was happening. So I've shared some of that to to show you a little bit about who I am. And again, Facebook Live is a great way to do that, to just share a little bit of you, your life, and what you're interested in. But ultimately, those are all, these are all the great things about you, but ultimately, when somebody comes to watch a live like you're doing now, the, the question that's in anybody's mind is, what's in it for me? So somebody coming to watch you and engage with you on Facebook Live is interested in what you can give to them, what you can provide for them. So this is where knowing who you want to reach is so important. I know exactly who I want to reach. I want to reach heart-led women, women who think they've got a message, something they want to share, something they know that they can help, support, encourage, impact other women in their lives. And I want to help those women. So that's who I'm always thinking about when I'm preparing my lives, preparing my videos, any blog posts. And you should be too. Who is it? Who's your ideal person? Who do you want to engage with? Who do you want to draw towards your business and who you are? 
And so once you know that, you can then start to look at what are their issues? What are the things they want to hear about? What are they interested in? What are their pain points? What do they need help with? And to give you an example, when I, I was talking to you yesterday live about how I had written out a list of all the things I thought I would be covering in my business and I thought I would be teaching. And actually, as I've got more and more into my business and more and more into broadcasting live, I have discovered that a lot of you need huge amounts of support with things like confidence, things like preparing, um, and also simple things like what to wear. Um, I was really surprised at the number of people that contacted me after videos and said, what are you wearing? Why did you choose to wear that? Are there good colours to go live on TV? Are there good colours to be on video? What should I avoid? Now, when I'd written out my plan of my business and what I would be teaching, that actually wasn't on there. But Facebook Live has kind of fed, back, fed this back to me that women need support and help with that. So now you'll see I've created a Pinterest account with boards on it to help you find outfits and suitable things to wear for TV and speaking gigs. Um, and I'm starting to share a little bit about what I've chosen to wear, you know, to go live or to do a video. Now that is because there is a need. The, the people that I am reaching have a need and they want me to share that information with them. So something that I would consider fairly straightforward, I know what works and I know what suits me and I know what to wear, but for a lot of women that's a big issue and they panic about that. So I have realised that actually things that might seem very basic to you might seem very natural. You may be able to pick that, you know, that, the perfect thing to wear for video. You might be able to create the perfect product for your business, whatever it might be. And other people may struggle with that. So don't assume that everybody has your level of knowledge and your level of expertise in even the most basic of things. And you can share that. So Facebook Lives are an amazing way to do that. Um, you might have seen, I wrote a blog post yesterday, um, and it's on my Facebook page if you haven't seen it, and it was about an encounter I'd had. And I tell, I've told a story about this encounter with a, a man in a car park, which sounds far more dodgy than it was. <laughs> um, but uh, there was a reason for this, uh, telling, sharing this story. But th the reason I shared it was because I thought afterwards that this man had quite an important message. It was something I walked away with, and I felt, goodness, you know, he taught me something. And so I used that as content. I came onto my page and I wrote that blog post. And if you haven't read it, go and have a look. It's called uh, What a War Veteran Taught Me About my message, sharing my message. Um, now, that again, you, your life is full of stories, encounters, people, experiences that you've had, training that you've done, places that you've been, people that you've met. Your life is full of those. Those happen to you every day. And actually sharing those is another great tip for Facebook Lives. They can be very powerful stories that connect people to you and can be relevant in teaching something connected to your business. Um, so those are kind of the key things really, your expertise and knowledge, however basic you think your knowledge is, there are people out there who need it. So write down everything you know on the subject that you are primarily interested in in your business, everything. Then look at your passions and your interests and things that are happening in your life that you can share too. They may be able to help teach other people things, it might just be some kind of insightful guide. But share those things too, there's nothing wrong with that. So that's more great content for Facebook Live. Look then at the needs of, your, of the people who are watching. It always needs to go back to this. What do they want help with? What do they need guidance on? What are they looking for solutions for? And look at how you can answer those questions. Now, a good example is a wedding photographer who spoke to me the other day and said, you know, I'm a wedding photographer, but obviously I know a lot of the pain points for my brides and grooms, for example, are nothing to do with photography. They're to do with planning a wedding, organising the table plan, whatever. And that's a really good example of how you have still got expertise, even though you are in one area of that industry. So in this case, weddings and photography. Actually, you'll have been to lots of weddings. You'll know what works. You'll know what some brides have felt disappointed with in the past in terms of timings or priorities they've had. You can share all of this. You have knowledge, you have expertise, and you could bring that, even though that's not directly connected to wedding photography, let's say, per se. So don't just think it has to be the expertise that your business has. You will also have these other branches, other areas of the industry that you know some things about that you can share. 
So look for the pain points, look for the ways that you can help, look for the, the needs that your ideal person has and try to meet those, try to share those by being human, by being you. And um, the final thing is that to tell you is that people will always, always connect with stories. So people want to feel connected to you, particularly when you're live, because it is, um, in lots of cases, it's quite a sharing environment, it's quite an engaging environment, and people want to feel that they trust the person that's in front of them. So don't be frightened to share stories and tell them things that have been happening in your life, tell them you know, you know, particularly things like if you're nervous, if you're worried about being live, there's no reason you can't say actually going live for me is quite intimidating. I saw um, a top American coach this morning and she was on the streets of New York going live and she was talking about confidence and, and confidence about uh, in going live and she spoke about her own confidence issues, the things she worried about, the braces on her teeth, her accent. She, she talked as she walked and shared this live, which was designed to offer guidance on how to feel more confident live. But what she did was share her own personal story, her own feelings about going live. So again, don't be frightened to share you and, and to share stories that you know will resonate and connect with the people that you would love to draw in. Because they want to hear those too. They want to know you're human and real. And because often we do business with people that we've come to like. There'll be something about somebody that you're just attracted to, that you're just drawn to. And that will make you de decide, actually, I'm going to book this person. I'm going to work with this person. Or this person's the one, the one that kind of suits my needs. So being human and being real is another great way to bring content to Facebook Lives. So there's tons of stuff there, and I challenge you to go away now and write. Um, I did a little diagram here, you probably can't see it, but I did a little diagram here about your life, your passions and your expertise and your knowledge, and then list under there all the things that you could talk about if you filled that in. And that will give you weeks and weeks of content. And then as you start to go live and you start to get the interaction and the feedback with people that you want to work with and connect with, you'll hear what they say they want to see more of. Um, and I always, at the end of my lives, just as I'm about to do now, is encourage, encourage people to contact me. Tell me what you need. Let me know how I can help. What are the problems? What are the issues? What would you like covered? Because that provides me with amazing content then for the next lives, 10 lives, 20 lives. So you have got far more knowledge, far more expertise, and far more of what people need than you realise. So I never want to hear you tell me again that you've got nothing to say on Facebook Live and what would you talk about because though just literally writing down in those three areas alone would give you fabulous content. Ultimately, always bring it back to what people need to know. Always bring it back to what they have come to you for so that you know that you're sending them away with great information, help, inspiration, ideas, but you're sending them away with something, just as I hope I've done with this live. So thank you so much for joining me. For those of you that are in the UK, you might like to know that I am preparing a one day workshop uh, on uh, how to go live on Facebook Live. So it will cover everything from the very beginnings right through to actually going live um, and technique and preparation and all sorts of things. And that, that's coming up sometime in July. So if you want to know about that, make sure that you are signed up to the newsletter, which you can do on any page of my website, which is lightofathousandstars.co.uk. You'll also get a free course in overcoming your, your nerves and being more confident as a speaker, a kind of beginner's guide, three-part course, which is free if you sign up to the newsletter as well. Um, in the meantime, if there's anything you'd like covering, I'd love to hear, I'd love to know, drop some comments, let me know what sort of things you would like to see in the Facebook Lives. I hope I've inspired you. Go away and do your list. And uh, you've got no excuses now for telling me that you have no idea what you're going to talk about because you now know that there's loads that you can. Have a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow.